Hello to all and I've been waiting for this moment for a very long time and I know I've already mentioned or hinted that we are working on the Horopedia Encyclopedia project but today I finally wanted to share with you many more details about this ambitious and meaningful endeavor fully centered around the notion of transmission of knowledge. There is a lot at stake and basically we want to document all the watchmaking know-how for current and future generations and to do so with a totally neutral and independent approach and we want Horopedia to be a federating project for the better of the entire watchmaking ecosystem. Okay, so let's come back to the inception of Horopedia. From the very start of Watches TV 12 years ago, well, I wanted to create a watchmaking video glossary, but thankfully, if I can say so, well, I never had the time or the resources to do so. I asked a few friends and colleagues to help me out on developing this idea, but it never really went any further and it simply proved to me that this was going to be a tough challenge to tackle. So during COVID, I took a bit more time to think about it and see the best way to structure it. My goal was to come up with a holistic approach that would depict as much as possible watchmaking in its entirety, meaning not only focus on the technical side of things, but also showcase what is around this essential dimension, such as tools, materials used, schools, museum, institution, with the extensive use of video and 3D animation. So to resume things, this book, the Berner, is considered one of the bibles of watchmaking, the most comprehensive dictionary of the industry, and simply put, I wanted to create the Berner of the 21st century. As you can see, this book is quite thick and illustrates very graphically the complexity of the project, especially since I wanted to add a few chapters and make Horopedia the reference online encyclopedia for watchmaking students and anyone having an interest in understanding what is behind the timepiece. Yes, I know, quite ambitious, but it's only through this holistic approach that I was convinced this project would make the most sense. For instance, and this is a true singularity of our approach, we want to put production methods in perspective of one another. When we cover a term, for instance, a watch case, well, we want to differentiate how a case is manufactured uh, using artisanal methods, basically done by hand, the Jean-Pierre Agman way, how it is manufactured using semi-artisanal slash semi-industrial methods with CNC machines for smaller uh, quantities, how cases can be stamped for much larger quantities uh, using industrial uh, production methods, and how you can use liquid metal or 3D printing solutions for high-tech method. But the key point is that there is no judgment between these various methods. There isn't one better than the other. They all suit different purposes and objectives, whether we're talking production costs, quantities, quality, and naturally dead delays. So the fact of differentiating these methods is really important to us. We want to showcase this for every single component. So yes, you can quite easily picture by yourself the immense task that is ahead of us. And this is the main reason why I then decided that such a project needed to go through an, another structure, a totally independent one, and thus the reason of creating the Horopedia Foundation. Administratively, it took us a little while to create it, but now we have been recognized as a foundation of public interest by the Geneva authorities, and this implies a few rules that come along, but all of them precisely go in the direction of what we want to do and how we want to do things. For us, and by us I mean my fellow Foundation Council members, the notion of independence and neutrality are totally key to the success of our endeavor. This is an educational project and has nothing to do with the communication platform. We want to put people and their skills at the very center of the project for all the people using Horopedia, and I couldn't be happier of having Mr. Philippe Dufour, the legendary watchmaker, acting as president of the Foundation. Alongside him, there is also Dr. Helmut Krott, a very savvy and respected watch specialist with a huge uh, culture regarding watchmaking history, and Mr. André Collard, a man who used to co-own and run a very renowned uh, supplier of the industry, Stern Creation, the famous dial maker, and a man who co-created the EPHG trade fair in the early 2000s, showcasing all the various suppliers of the industry. And then, well, there is me. But then we will have a horological and cultural committee whose role is to validate everything that is published on Horopedia's website. We will share in a second stage the various uh, international members of this committee, but the list is quite impressive and we will only have people that will share the strong ethics of the foundation. Again, independence, transparency and neutrality are pivotal. C'est notre devoir, les gens de mon âge, entre autres, de 
de participer à une opération comme celle-ci de façon à, à transmettre notre savoir. Parce que notre savoir dans le milieu horloger, c'est nos seules valeurs, j'entends. Les valeurs ne sont plus dans, dans la technique, puisque tout le monde a la même technique. Hein, que vous ayez en Chine ou au Japon, les machines sont les mêmes. Donc euh, on doit arriver à faire des produits qui ont des, qu'on appelle des valeurs ajoutées. Et souvent c'est des tours de main, c'est peut-être des secrets, des choses comme ça. Et on se doit de, de les transmettre. Comme je dis souvent, les cimetières sont pleins de secrets et il faut que ça s'arrête. So now the big question is how we finance this. Well, we count on donations and everyone can naturally make a donation, whether individuals, institutions or companies. And this can, and this can be done through our website, horopedia.org. And here's a flash code bringing you directly to this option or you can do a bank transfer. Being a foundation of public interest, you will get a receipt and this can be used as a tax deduction depending on your country's law regarding this. In the future, we will most uh, certainly expand our financing options and for all the videos that will be shared, we will make two versions. A short one that will always be free and a longer one where we go much deeper in the various processes and these will be available through a subscription fee, but this will be introduced on a later stage. So the goal is to think of the long-term economical sustainability of the foundation because we really want Horopedia to be a reference for decades to come. We know that there will always be uh, new things to be added and by definition it can be considered as a constant work in progress. So rich and inventive is this uh, watchmaking industry that we love. But this also implies that uh, published video will get updates based on what we will be able to film. So not only we will keep a memory of the uh, things existing, but we will continuously improve our content for educational purposes. Coming back to how the encyclopedia is structured, we have chapters and sub-chapters. Chapter one is called Base Elements, where we share all the base definitions such as material used in watchmaking, their properties, advantages and disadvantages, and how they are used, sourced and produced. We will describe all the tools and machines, how they are used and how they are built, all the different professions found in watchmaking, all the measurement units, and obviously, simply how a watch works, the mechanical principles behind the time-telling machine. We'll cover all the complications and complicated mechanisms. Well, this chapter is a way to give all the keys to better understanding chapter two entitled Technique. In this one, we fully decompose all the components found in the timepiece. What are their function and how they are produced depending on the production method I mentioned before. This chapter will of course be the biggest one of the encyclopedia and is divided into the following subchapter. The case, bracelet and buckles, dial and display, movement of course, setting operation, decoration and finishing, surface treatments and finally assembly and control. So yes, quite a heavy chapter. The third chapter will be dedicated to schools and basically our goal is to list and present all the different watchmaking schools around the planet. We might not be able to make a video on all these schools, but we thought it would be interesting to show what are the various options for all those wanting to embrace a career in watchmaking. Chapter 4 will be focused on the various institutions such as chronometrical uh, laboratories, certification organization, and chapter 5 will list all the museums around the planet that are either fully or partially dedicated to watchmaking. So quite an extensive program ahead of us, but you are all welcome to share ideas, suggestions, definition edits and pictures, well to continuously improve what will be shared with the entire community. There is a participative uh, dimension to this project and uh, we welcome all types of inputs. On our side, things have already started intensely. Firstly, we published the website, which will give you a good idea of everything we want to cover. We translated it into English and German and other languages will be added as we go along. We started filming and you will find the very first video on the, the website showcasing our approach and to start up with, well, you will find a video on angling and beveling techniques, how watchmaking tweezers are produced, how an escapement wheel is manufactured using artisanal method and also a video about the Geneva watchmaking school. But of course, we have many more coming. 
Regarding the website, well, we want to make it as smart and ergonomic as possible, meaning that we will cross-reference all the various pages and information available, have as many links that will ease your usage, and create a navigation logic that will help you have a simple access to any question that may arise. This work is currently ongoing, but we know where we're going. Well, now I hope uh, you all have the necessary elements to understand better what the Horopedia Foundation is all about. And we naturally really count on people, companies and in institutions to make it possible, either by helping us finance uh, such a project, but also by opening their doors to help us document all this fantastic watchmaking know-how. I know and I've already heard that some might want to keep their little secrets, but I always use the following image to counter this. Regarding a recipe, a top three-star Michelin chef can give you all the ingredients he uses to the very gram, the cooking times, to the seconds, but try to make it yourself and it will never look or taste the same, generally far from it. What I mean by this is that it's really the chef's very own talent, his experience, his hands that will make the difference. And it's the same with watchmaking. Sharing the recipe doesn't mean that you'll be able to mimic it, but at least you will understand better how it's done. And maybe one day with a lot of practice, well, you might get not too far off, maybe. So yes, please open your doors and let's make this a great collective effort uh, for the future of our beloved industry. Imagine students looking at this video in 50 or 100 years to see how things have been done. Imagine how today we would totally love to see how things were performed in Abraham Louis Breguet's workshop. Well, this is the legacy Horopedia wants to leave. And lastly, I just wanted to add that the foundation has two goals in its uh, statutes. The first one is obviously the notion of transmission of knowledge, and this will use all the foundation's resources for the next few years. But once we will have reached a certain level of published content, we will open up the mission of the foundation as we want to be able to create opportunities. And by this, I mean that if we have enough uh, uh, resources available, well, we want to give, for instance, scholarships for watchmaking students, be able to help purchase machines for schools, pay for the restoration of a tower clock. Well, anything that is related to preserving watchmaking culture at large, and a special committee will be responsible for this. But as said, this will only happen a bit down the road. Already enough to do in the short and midterm on our shoulders. But, you know, just wanted to be explicit on the goals of Horopedia. So to conclude this video and on a personal level, I must say that I am extremely happy and motivated to have started this project, kind of a life project, and a way to give back to the community all the amazing experiences, fantastic encounters I have enjoyed in the past 12 years, but also having witnessed what is at stake with the loss of know-how, and I clearly feel that this absolutely needed to be addressed. So now, and more than ever, VIVA Watchmaking! But just to be clear, Horopedia and Watches TV are two separate things. We'll keep you posted on Watches TV on how things are advancing with Horopedia, but that's it. So thanks a lot for watching and I wish you all the very best and long live Horopedia. See you real soon. And if you want to make a donation, well, you know how to do that. Link below. Thanks a lot. See you soon.